going to be in Revelation chapter number one if you have your Bibles. And I do have, have a good reason why I forgot my notes here. Uh, but if you have your Bibles, Revelation chapter number one. And we just started this morning uh, during the Sunday school hour with a few of us uh, rehearsing for our Easter musical. So uh, I wanted to start with that. As you're turning to Revelation chapter 1, as I catch my breath. <laughs> so, the Lord is just so good. And I wanted to share some things sort of behind the scenes that you, you don't get to see or hear about during the week. But uh, I have been praying for months, really November, December, and then really hard the beginning of January, just for the Lord to give us something special for, for Easter as a church. I really miss the uh, passion experience, and the Lord has closed that chapter, uh, so that's okay. You know, he has seasons that come and seasons that go, and he blessed us with that pa outdoor passion play to, for us to uh, be encouraged by and, uh, and be blessed by, and then it was for our community um, to be blessed as well. If you remember, uh, this Easter will be three years since we did that. Uh, it's unbelievable, but uh, yeah, about three years since we did our last Passion Experience. We did it for seven years. If you guys remember, which I'm sure you do, maybe you try to forget, but we always do it on Good Friday night and the Saturday night before Easter, but the last Good Friday night we had this big storm. If you recall, it rained us out. We, we had never uh, canceled it before, but man, bad storm blew through. Had to cancel it on Good Friday evening, and so we just did it one night. And we had 350 people that came on the one night. Uh, and I tell you what, it's, you know, I always joke about it, but it's a miracle from God to invite people into the woods in North Fort Myers at night, and they come. It's just a miracle of the Lord. <laughs> 350 people came on our last night, so that was a blessing, and the Lord's closed that chapter. We're going to miss that. So I've just been praying, and uh, so, some of our leaders were praying with me to just, Lord, we, we, we just, we, we're going to miss that for us and for our community. We want to give something to our community. We, want, we just want something special from you. And two weeks ago, just two weeks ago, you know how the Lord loves to wait till the last minute for us. It's never his last minute. He's got it all planned out. But a lot of times it's our last minute. But the Lord just poured into my heart and soul uh, this Easter musical that uh, is, is coming together now. And I just say that to say that the Lord is so good. And every day, he, is, he has like this big bucket of his spirit that he is just pouring into me and others as we prepare for this. We had our first rehearsal uh, during the Sunday school hour with a couple of us this morning. That's why I forgot my, my notes. But um, we also have some people working behind the scenes on the scenery already. And uh, people are learning their lines. Pray for um, Pastor Jeff's not here. He's picking up his mom in North Carolina, bringing her back down this weekend, uh, but he's our drummer that we're missing, but he, uh, he's going to be one of the main characters, Janet Ritchie main characters, pray for them, they have a lot of lines to learn, and it's a musical, so songs to, to learn as well, but I, I wanted to tell you that just to let you know that the Lord is really doing some awesome things behind the scene, but I also wanted to point out two things, it's just and you know in your own personal lives, when the Lord pours into you at different times, it's such an amazing thing that he notices you, right? That he notices me, that he's the God of the universe. But he cares about you as an individual. He cares about us as a church. And the two things the Lord just keeps telling me over and over for our church is that he sees us. Are you with me? Sometimes people drive right by here and they don't see us, but God sees us. <laughs> Amen? And he's confirming by giving us this and pouring into us, he's confirming that we are doing exactly what he wants us to do. That we are keeping in step with the Spirit and we're right where he wants us to be. Amen? 
And so I just wanted to share that with you because you just don't get to hear it any other time. But it goes along with uh, the message that the Lord poured into me for you this morning to be encouraged by. And that's simply to be in a posture to receive from the Lord. And that's what we're talking about today. We're not getting into Revelation, the Revelation. Um, most of you were here when I went verse by verse through Revelation for five months. And it's on our YouTube channel if you want to catch any one of those verses and chapters that we went through for a little over five months actually and ended last summer uh, verse by verse through the Revelation. But Revelation uh, chapter 1, I just want to look at the Lord pouring into John. And I want to go right to point number one before we actually read this. <clears throat> and point number one is this. If we do not receive from the Lord, we have nothing to give of eternal value. And we need to understand that. We can do a lot of really good things, nice things, and all sorts of things. But if we don't receive from the Lord, we have nothing to give of eternal value. Eternal value is what matters the most. Amen? If it's not going to last for eternity, it's very temporary. God's Word calls it a vapor. <laughs> it's here today, gone tomorrow. So we want to make sure we're investing in things that matter for eternity and the way we do that is to at, with the Lord's help put ourselves in a posture to receive from him uh, went out with uh, Garth in his boat a while back uh, it was right before Christmas we got to get out there again oh my goodness um, but he was gracious enough to take me for a ride up the river and man had a beautiful day Boat ran great. We ran up to the river and got some lunch and getting, getting, getting in the boat to come back. And we back out of the little dock and uh, the engine alarm comes on. And if you've ever heard a boat motor engine alarm, it's very annoying and loud. It has to be, right? And it's, you know, I don't want to do it for you. My wife would go, yeah, do it, do it, do it. But I'm like, yeah, you know, it's really bad. <laughs> but something's wrong right Garth knew what to do right away he goes back and looks at the engine and there's no water coming out of the back of the engine and if you know anything about boats and their motors they're water cooled so they suck water in through an intake and then they put it out the back so if it's not coming out the back that means it's not coming up in the motor and it's not getting cooled and that's the alarm and your your engine's going to overheat and not work anymore very shortly <laughs> So Garth did such a good job of turning us around and heading back to the dock, which we weren't very far from, and uh, shut the motor off before there was any problems with that. And there was, there was a marina right there too, which I believe cost him a lot of money, but <laughs> the Lord provided. But it, please hear me when I, I'm giving you that example. It's a great example of receiving from the Lord. If we're not receiving from Him, if we're not taking in from him. Are you with me? We got nothing to put out. Nothing of eternal value. We've got to be taking in from him, receiving from him, so that we have something to give. All the things the Lord gives us that we don't have on our own, like his wisdom, like his power that we don't have, like his peace that we don't have unless we receive it from him, like his direction, his discernment, his grace. His mercy, His patience. Do I hear an amen? His kindness, His love. We don't have those things naturally without them coming from the Lord. We have a kind of love. It's not like God's love. We have a kind of patience. It's not God's patience. We have a kind of peace, but it's not God's peace. It's not the peace that passes all understanding unless it comes from Him. Are you with me? And so we need to take him in and take that in and receive before we have something to give. Now let's look at John chapter, I'm sorry, Revelation 1, chapter number 9. John is speaking here and receiving this revelation from Jesus. This is Revelation chapter number 1. 
And I just want to read a few verses here, starting with verse number 9. And verse number 9 says this, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, all those things, please remember, are a part of our Christianity, are they not? Tribulation. But we get the kingdom. And we need the patience of Jesus Christ. Well, John was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. In other words, he had been exiled there to a prison island for preaching and teaching Jesus Christ. We don't know what the situation was. I mean, sometimes when I read this, I think, man, wouldn't that be cool? <laughs> that doesn't sound too bad. Drop me off on a desert island, you know, for a little while. But I'm sure we would get hungry and thirsty and all those things. So I'm sure it was not uh, a good situation. It was a, for prisoners there on that island of Patmos. Verse 10 says, I, John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. That's really the key here. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. He was having church. Are you with me? He was having his devotions. He was spending time with the Lord. One wonders if the Lord would have poured into him if he was just over there fishing or throwing coconuts around. I don't know, but he was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And then he received from the Lord. The rest of verse 10, I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. We're going to stop right there. Point number two. Regardless, please let the Lord speak to your heart today, wherever you are at in your life. Regardless of your circumstances, put yourself in a posture to receive from the Lord. Please let me say it again. Regardless of my circumstances, of your circumstances, whatever is going on in our life, we need to put ourselves in a posture to receive from the Lord. John was in prison. And again, we don't know exactly what that looked like, but there's no prison that's a good prison. They tell you what to do. They tell you when to eat. They tell you when to drink. You have no freedom. He was in prison. He could have been doing anything on the Lord's day. But what was he doing? He was spending time with the Lord. He was in the Spirit. Even though he was imprisoned in a, in a not a good situation, he still put himself in a posture to receive from the Lord. And man, did he receive from the Lord. Amen? So, hey, point number three. Designated, focused time in God's Word and prayer is the best posture to be in to receive from the Lord. Period. Period. Please note, God can speak to our hearts and minds at any time and anywhere. We praise the Lord for that. But, designated, focused time in God's Word, in prayer, lays the groundwork for that and so much more. Uh, look at point number three, designated and focused. That means a set time with the Lord, setting aside other things. The Lord loves that. Don't you love that? If someone focuses on you and sets things aside... Uh, my wife and I joke around every now and then because there's several types of listening that I'm sure you're aware of. There is aggressive listening, right? Where you, that's what this is. You are focused on the person talking to you. You are pushing aside all the other things. And then there's passive listening. Passive listening with your spouse is never good. It's never good. You're just kind of passive. You're probably thinking of something else while they're talking. And every now and then my wife and I will go, hey, da-da-da-da-da, and, and, you know, one of us will go, I don't remember you saying that. And then we'll, the other one will go, that's because you were probably passive listening because I said it. <laughs> and yeah, she gets that way more than me, so I'm just saying. I... But we understand that with people, right? It's the same in our relationship with the Lord. Does he want us to be doing other things while we're talking to him? Yeah, sometimes it's okay if you're talking to the Lord while you're I talk to the Lord when I'm fishing or when I'm in a boat 
or when I'm walking. You know, you can, be, you, it's, you can do other things while you're talking to the Lord. But man, there's nothing better than focused, designated time where you push everything aside and you tell the Lord, I'm spending time with you and nothing else and nobody else right now. And man, we love that. He loves that too. Designated and focused time. We all understand how much it means to us. We know that it means a lot to the Lord. Point number four, God loves it when we set aside time for him. None of us, if Jesus were standing right in front of us, would dare tell him that uh, we're just a little busy right now. I mean, we'd, we wouldn't do that. If he was just standing right in front of us and wanted to talk to us and spend time with us, we wouldn't say, I got a few things to do. I'll be right back. <laughs> Guess what? He's, he's in our hearts. He's with us. He might as well be standing right in front of us. Are you with me? And he understands work. He understands grocery shopping and mowing the lawn. He understands things that we have to do. Of course he does. He gave us those things to do. But at the same time, we need to set aside designated and focused time where we tell him, I'm not too busy. I'm never too busy to spend time with the Lord. Understand that Jesus is in our hearts in person, the person of the Holy Spirit. And just as much as he loves us to spend time with him, how it must grieve him and his Holy Spirit when we don't. Think about that. Again, think about what might have happened if John were not in the Spirit on the Lord's day, but because he was, wow, we get the book of Revelation. We get this revelation. Think about some other people, other examples from God's Word who were in a posture to receive from him. Think about Paul and Silas who were, again, another prison situation. This was not probably as nice as the Isle of Patmos. They were in a dungeon they were chained with guards right beside them. They could have been complaining. They could have been, you know, asleep. They could have been doing all sorts of things. But Acts 16 tells us what they were doing. If you want to jot this down or turn there with me, Acts 16, verses 25 and 26, God's Word says this, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Wow! Think about that the next time you're in a difficult situation or a difficult circumstance. And that's what God is really saying this morning in a powerful way. No matter what the circumstance is, we need to spend time with the Lord. Amen? And look at Paul and Silas. At midnight, they're praying and singing hymns and they're in prison. And that was a Roman prison chained to a wall, not comfortable and the prisoners were listening to them, shining their light in a dark place. You know the rest of the story. I'll just read verse 26. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prisons were shaken. Immediately all the doors were open. Everyone's chains were loose. They were freed. They were freed. They led the jailer and his family to the Lord, I believe, because they were in a posture to receive from the Lord. What if they were just sitting there saying, woe is me. What if they were complaining to all the other prisoners? We shouldn't even be in here. We haven't done anything wrong. Right? I mean, there's that posture. I'm a, I'm a victim. I'm complain. You know, I'm going to complain when things are going wrong. I'm not going to. Or there's the posture of, I believe that God works all things for good to them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Amen? There's that posture where, you know what? I'm going to spend time with the Lord even though I'm in a really difficult situation because I want to receive from him. They received quite a bit. We all love the story of Zacchaeus in Luke chapter 19. You probably remember from your childhood days in Sunday school, the little song about Zacchaeus being a wee little man. I can't remember it. I remember the little, uh, a little bit of it. We all know that story. Uh, Luke chapter 19, Zacchaeus was very short. He couldn't see as the crowds were pressing in on Jesus. But he wanted to see Jesus so much, he climbed a tree. A grown man climbing a tree. How often do you see that? Let's be honest, not very much. But he was determined, right? He didn't let his situation of, hey, you know, he could have just said, ah, 
you know, I'm short. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to see him. I'm just going to quit. I'm not going to try, you know, to see Jesus, to get to Jesus. But he wanted to get to Jesus. Amen? He wanted to get to Jesus. He climbed that tree. Jesus saw him, went to his house, and he was saved. Amen? Because he wanted to see Jesus. He put himself in a posture, in a position to receive from the Lord. And man, did he. And we all love the story of Mary and Martha in Luke chapter 10. You're familiar with that. Jesus comes to their house. Mary sits at Jesus' feet. She just wants to listen to him. She doesn't want anything else. She just wants to listen to him. And Martha, as I'm sure she was well-intentioned. She wanted to serve some drinks, probably some food, maybe. But God's word says she was distracted with much serving. So it was probably a little over the top <laughs> if it was distracting her from Jesus because we don't want anything to distract us from Jesus, amen? And what does Jesus tell her? Luke chapter 10, let me just read to you verses 41 and 42 of Luke chapter 10. Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed. Do we get that? Do we let that sink in? One thing is needed. What is it? It's Jesus. And Mary has chosen that good part which will not be taken away from her. Let God speak to you right now from his word about how important it is to put ourselves in a posture to receive from him. We're getting ready to have communion in just a few minutes. Communion is just that. We know it's remembering what Jesus did. But it's also stopping everything and focusing on his sacrifice for us. And getting into a posture in our heart where we can receive from the Lord. The Lord. Point number five, may we have a hunger and a thirst thirst for more of him. Amen? <clears throat> um, how many of you are watching the baby eaglets out there on Bayshore? How many of you are keeping up with them? They're getting cuter. They're still ugly, but they're getting cuter. <clears throat> but my wife and I check in with them every day. We're just hoping nothing bad happens because it'll break our heart. We're really invested now. Every day we turn it on and they're either sleeping or eating. It's just, just no in between. They look like they're dead when they're sleeping. If you've seen them, they're just, they're just out. But man, when they're eating, when they're receiving that food, if you've watched those little videos of the, of the eagles, those eagles are so majestic. Wow. And they've got that camera like right there by the nest. If you haven't seen it, boy, you've got to check it out. But, you know, one of the eagles will come with a fish or, you know, other animals that we won't describe. But they come with their food and they sit there and they, you know, pull off a part and then they give it to one. They pull off a part and give it to the other one. And, man, do they come alive when that food hits the net. They look like they're just dead. And, man, when that, that food comes, they just start, you know, they can't hardly walk. So I'm doing like they do. <laughs> But they just can't hardly walk. But man, they get over there because they are hungry and thirsty. Are you with me? And they get over there. They find a way to, to waddle over there. And it's really funny because sometimes we'll be pulling for the one that doesn't get as much. You know, we'll be like, oh, come on, mom. The one's getting it all. You'll give something to the other one. Well, they have this little wrestling thing sometimes where they, like the one will, will get a wing up on the other one and kind of hold it down while he, he'll get like three, four bites in a row. And then the other one will just get, get up over that one and then he'll get three or four bites in a row. It's very entertaining. It's just very entertaining. But you see the point, right? How hungry and thirsty are we to receive from the Lord? I mean, how hungry are we? Or, or how distracted are we? How hungry are we? How thirsty are we? Man, you look at those little babies. Their life depends on that. Does our soul depend on the Lord and, and, and receiving from him? May we have a hunger and a thirst for God and his word, for our relationship with him, for prayer with him, for time with him. 
And may we put ourselves in that posture where we push things aside to receive from the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you bow your heads with me? And we're going to prepare our hearts for communion this morning. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, would you just spend some time right now, just between you and the Lord, please don't worry about the person next to you or what's happening later. But right now, let the Lord speak to your heart from his word as we saw John and how he put himself in that posture to receive from the Lord. And boy, did the Lord pour into him. We want the Lord to pour into us. Ask the Lord to help you each day. Put yourself in that posture to receive from him, and he will do it. Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you so much for these great examples from your word, even, Lord, from life all around us. Lord, where, where we see a posture of receiving. Lord, even if it's as simple as birds that you created out in nature that are hungry and that are thirsty, may our souls be hungry for you. May our souls be thirsty for your word. Help us, Lord to put ourselves in that posture each day to receive from you. And we know that you will be faithful to pour yourself into us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen.